Driving at home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, guys, we're back with another week of Driving at Home with Dr. Claire Losey. Lo- Claire, how you doing? <laughs> Losey, Claire, how you doing this morning? <laughs> I am doing great. I love that roll call. (laughs) Awesome. We've got all the names covered just to ensure we know who you are. (laughs) Why don't we touch base quickly about how it went up in Wyoming last week? So we talked about last week the fact that the Fed was meeting for their sort of annual retreat. We joked about them being on horses, but did they actually make any substantive announcements related to the economy? So broadly speaking, as is usual, Chair Powell kind of encased his language in a little bit more dubious terms, right? Doesn't necessarily want to spook the market one way or another. And his kind of famous line from the symposium is that that we, being the Federal Reserve, are navigating by the stars under cloudy skies. So a little bit of a nebulous interpretation, but essentially... The market is anticipating that the Federal Reserve will hold its Fed funds rate steady at its September meeting and then potentially raise the rate in either its November or December meeting. So right now, the Fed funds rate is hovering between 5.25% and 5.5%. So again, broadly anticipated by the market to remain within that target range over the next couple of months. So perhaps inspired by the Wyoming skies, but that's an interesting comment from an economist, not the kind of narrative we typically expect. But also that's a touch different than what we talked about last week, where we felt like perhaps the Fed was going to raise that 25 basis point here in the near term in September. It looks like they're going to ride it out a bit longer and are anticipated to raise now later into the fall. That's correct. I think just given the movement that's happened most recently in the bond markets, not wanting investors to get, you know, too pessimistic about the broader state of the economy and just waiting for that ongoing data to to trickle in. Of course, if inflation comes in particularly hot in early September, early to mid-September, then the Federal Reserve may feel compelled to raise rates in September, but Broadly speaking, it looks like they're trying to hold off a little bit until they receive more data on an ongoing basis. Just in trying to interpret that in the context of the timing as it relates to the housing market, too, that's interesting, I think, for our agents, given it was really last winter that we most felt that real stall out or shift in the market as compared to the two years prior and now we're looking at the potential for the for mortgage rates to react to the basis points increased by the Fed in that late fall slash early winter. What do you think about that implication? I mean, does that align with a lull that's traditional in terms of selling seasons? Or is there any reason that, you know, what I feel kind of innately is that agents need to really push through the fall, given there's the potential for the increase in rates again into the fall, into the late fall, early winter? Right. And so much of it really, too, is dependent on what's going to be happening in the bond market. And we know, of course, that the 10-year Treasury yield has reached recent highs within the past couple of weeks to the tune of about 4.2, 4.3%. So hopefully that the yield on the 10-year Treasury will diminish over the next several weeks, especially if the inflation data in September comes in cooler you know, hopefully that we'll see that reaction and that will induce a little bit of downward pressure on mortgage rates. But again, over the short term, we're anticipating that mortgage rates will remain elevated. But then, of course, like you've mentioned, if the Federal Reserve does raise rates again, you know, in November or December, then there's the potential for mortgage rates to climb a little bit higher. So overall, yes, it is in some senses probably better for buyers or potential buyers to try to move now, you know, to try to move a little bit earlier to get a jump start. Yeah. And for anybody listening who forgets what the 10-year treasury yield is and what it means, I would encourage you to go back and listen to last week's Driving at Home. We'll link that up in the notes as well for this episode. But we gave a more in-depth kind of conversation around what the yield is and why it matters, which we'll keep coming back to into the fall per Claire's direction here. 
Claire, let's talk a little bit about what happened with the labor market. So I think the new Austin labor market report just came out. What are you seeing in that in terms of how we're holding on our local economy front? So we've seen a little bit of moderation in jobs growth. So in July, on a year-over-year basis, our jobs growth measured 3.1%, which is below our long-term average of about 3.8% and below our post-Great Recession to pre-COVID recession average of 3.5%. So some of the slack in the labor market is attributable to just a little bit of ongoing turmoil within the information sector, i.e. really here talking about technology. Recently, tech stocks have taken somewhat of a beating, so layoffs are becoming more of an issue in that arena. And of course, a retrenchment in, in new hiring. And then, of course, just the ongoing, you know, uh, kind of turmoil, just economic uncertainty within the markets has caused the financial activity sector to also be uncharacteristically slow with respect to jobs growth. Yeah. So slowing up a little, still averaging ahead of the national numbers, or are we still outperforming as compared to national? We're fairly commensurate with okay. the U.S. on a national basis and Texas as well. And two, here we have to remember that we are dealing with what we call base effects, i.e. when you're making a year-over-year comparison, you have to think about conditions to the year prior, to the month of the year um, prior in which you're making the comparison. So right now, you know, with this below, kind of a little bit below average jobs growth, what's really happening is that July of 2022 was so strong in the labor market Um, that it's a little bit of not so much of an analogous comparison, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, we're getting into a time of year where we're going to get closer to comparing the significant shifts that we saw economically in the fourth quarter and first quarter of last year as compared to this year, where I anticipate we'll we'll perform better as as inflation has yielded a bit. But it's going to be interesting to see the dynamics of the comparison shift. We spent you know, almost a year saying things are not like they were in 2021 and 2020 and even 2022 in large part. Now we're going to get towards having to compare to an, another kind of anomaly, this kind of significant economic shift. And so I think with all of this from an agent's perspective and just in working with your clients, you have to remember that context is king and your context is built on a on all kinds of anomalies over the last several years as conditions coming out of COVID and out of the pandemic that may or may not be repeated into the future. So you just you know, take it with a grain of salt, these comparisons, and recognize the context of what you're looking back on, as Claire is suggesting. Claire, what happened with housing permits? How are we looking in terms of inventory overall in the market right now? Great question. So we're well positioned on that front in the sense that we've seen a rise in new single-family housing permits over the past half year, a little bit over a half year now, really since December of 2022. That month, new single family housing permits reached a recent low of about 850. But we ended July of this year with about 1,400 new single family housing permits slated for the Austin Round Rock Georgetown MSA. So overall, we are seeing more activity and, and should be seeing, you know, more single-family construction activity in the Austin market over the next year or two. And if I recall, we saw a slowing in permits towards the first half of the year in response to some of that economic unsteadiness. And certainly right. we saw the market absorb any sitting inventory with builders pretty quickly. Right. And of course, we have to remember that this rise in new single-family permits is, you know, in spite of the rise in mortgage rates. So clearly, home builders in Austin feel like, despite the rise in mortgage rates, demand for new homes is still strong enough to justify this rise in permits. And two, they're also catching up from, you know, somewhat slower activity in 2022. You know, they're also, in a sense, making up for lost time. Yeah. My point just being that, you know, home, new home construction makes up a significant portion of what's available in our market. And right. you're going to see some research released here out of ABOR pretty soon, 
we record early. And so, you know, within a few days, you'll note that we're going to release some research that that Claire has conducted related to just how far behind we are in terms of our overall inventory. That being resale, you know, related to people sitting on homes because they've got they had incredible interest rates over the last few years and are not interested in in moving right now. And, and also as it relates to just the lack of inventory that we've experienced over a decade now has just kind of come to a head. And so we want to talk about real in real numbers what that means. Claire, what are we looking like week over week in terms of just our buzziness and our market overall? So we have seen a contraction in sales activity, and that's somewhat to be expected, right, with the rise in mortgage rates, of course, last week. We ended the week with an average rate of 7.23%, which is a two plus decade high. And then we're starting to see that trickle into sales activity, but it will take some time for the effect of higher rates to fully, to be fully integrated into for sales activity to really reflect those higher rates. On a week over week basis, last week, closed sales were down 10.4%. And pending sales were down about 2%. Relative to this week last year, pending sales were down about 9% and closed sales were down about 12%. And remember that mortgage rates were about 1.5 percentage points lower this week or last week, last year. So overall, you know, again, we're seeing that contraction in sales activity. On the leasing front, though, we're, we've seen a bit of an uptick. Of course, we've talked about this before, but renting a home is the most comparable alternative to purchasing a home. So overall, last week we saw in the Austin MSA that pending leases were up about 7% and closed leases were up 5%. And kind of in terms of the price ranges where we're seeing activity contract more in the greater Austin market, Really now at this point is concentrated in that upper higher price range threshold. So really homes essentially that are $600,000 and above have seen a little bit more contraction in sales activity over the past year. Um, While actually our more affordable homes, really those under $400,000 have seen a little bit of an uptick in, in sales activity. So tides are definitely shifting there a little bit, right? Initially, When with higher mortgage rates, we saw that first hit, you know, the potential first time buyers, i.e. those buyers who would have been able to afford that kind of lower price stock. But again, now it's um, kind of more so affecting the, the higher priced homes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, too, I mean, you know, we have to wonder to what degree back to school plays. plays a role. The heat, I mean, very realistically, it is brutal outside, although it's only going to be 99 today. So what a cool off. And so, you know, I think we just keep watching week to week some how the market responds to some of this volatility that's outside of our control. But we want to encourage agents just to use this data to their benefit to help, you know, provide context for to counter what you see in headlines and counter the experiences you're having on the ground and encourage you guys to stay up to date. Thanks so much. Claire, appreciate you. Thanks for having me. 